John, double overtime yep. loss at Western Illinois, and the one word I heard you use quite a bit after that game on Saturday was disappointing. Very disappointing. You know, we had uh, we had uh, battled our tail off all season to, to be in the position we were in. We talked about it for months, and uh, not to have it come uh, to fruition is it's got to be disappointing. You know, I have four turnovers in the in the second half. Um, not tackle or big back, big back. There's so many things about that performance that uh, wasn't the jackrabbit. So d- disappointed. We won't use it as an excuse, and I know you won't use it as an excuse, but certainly there's the context there of the various things that had gone on leading up to that game. And I'll ask you in review now, looking back, what effect do you think that sitting in an airport for 12 hours and sitting on an interstate highway for an hour and all the things, what effect do you think that had on your team? Well, everybody's everybody's got to make that choice. You know, I think there was some fatigue there. Uh, but there's fatigue after the fourth play if you're playing the, the game the way you're supposed to play it. So uh, to what degree uh, uh, we tried to preach and, and talk and minimize it, I don't know. I, I do know this. We had a chance. We had many chances to win that football game and then get it done. So uh, I can't dwell on that. Sure. One of the key moments, of course, was the you got the ball on the two-yard line. You got a chance to punch it in and go up. Uh, 17-3 at that point, and then, of course, your one and only fumble that you give up all season happens at the worst possible time, and instead of a 17-3 game, now all of a sudden you got a 10-10 game. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> again, the word disappointing. Uh, we, we, it just wasn't us. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the things that come on, on just one of these plays in this game, uh, that, you know, we learn lessons. We, we grow, we get tougher, and then we hurt along the way. And, I mean, we, again, we... We could be talking about uh, who we're going to play after the bye week because of that very play, you know, but uh, it wasn't meant to be. Offensively, certainly inconsistent at times, especially on third down, but there were also times when, especially with your backs against the wall late in that game, you you showed great determination. Zach Lujan, I know at times, could have maybe slid, instead sticks his nose in there and picks up extra yards. He threw some big balls at times as well, but also some inconsistency. And so dealing with adversity, something you and I talk a lot about, your team responded to adversity at a time where they could have just said, hey, things are going against us this weekend. It's just not our day. Well, yeah, when they went up, uh, uh, you know, it could have been 17-3, and then all of a sudden it was 17-10. Uh, it could have been, uh, you know, what was me. And, man, that was a long bus ride and a long airport, but we battled back. And, you know, I don't, uh, the, our offense did a really good job. Our defense, uh, you know, it made some big plays in the game, give us, a, give us some opportunities. But our guys don't give up. And, you know, that's never – than uh, anything I've ever noticed around here in my 20-some years of coaching at South Dakota State. And one of the big momentum plays, I know from standing on the sideline, it was a huge play, was the blocked field goal attempt, which might have put it out of reach for them, but instead you blocked that kick and your sideline erupted, and it really, really seemed to give you a second life there. Well, that uh, that's uh, energy, and, and uh, that's what turnovers do. Whoever gets them, that's what turnovers do against you if you give them up. You know, it takes, it takes energy away from you. It takes momentum and chance and opportunity away from you. Uh, and so uh, that, that, that uh, lit a fire against uh, Anders, and I think we drove the field after that and, and uh, had a chance to win the football game. Can you talk about T.J. Lally and the performance that he had? He's the player of the week in the, in the Valley and 17 tackles and, and just one of the leaders on that defense. Well, he's, a, he's a great leader. He's, uh, he leads by example. He leads uh, with, his, with his voice, with his heart with his spirit. I mean, he's one of those guys that uh, uh, has marked everybody he's been around, even the guys that don't know him, young guys that, that kind of want to be like him because he's such a special student athlete. How difficult was it for you to turn the page after that game, knowing that, of course, Sunday morning you were going to get a playoff assignment of some sort, but obviously that one smarted so badly. How, how quickly were you able to turn that page? Um. It doesn't matter how quickly I was. It, it, most importantly, it's how how uh, you know quick our players mm-hmm. do it. And and for me, I had to watch the film and uh, see where we could have been better coaches. I mean that I know it's the eleventh game of the year, but we, but why not learn? And and uh, there are a couple situations in that game on all the plays that that I think I could have had a better effect. And so after I was done with that, full speed ahead, we saw we're going to play Montana. 
and uh, and there's no rest now because we got <laughs> we got a week's worth of work to do in uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call it uh, a day and a half here. Sure. Uh, before we talk about the Grizzlies, let's talk big picture. The Missouri Valley got five teams in. Unfortunately, one of those probably benefited not 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 not, not probably definitely benefited from beating you guys, but but again, a strong showing for the Missouri Valley with two of the top eight seeds and five uh, teams overall. Yeah, it's a tremendous showing, and, and uh, I mean that. Um, I'll talk about us more than the Missouri Valley. That just says uh, more about our program for being in the playoffs the fourth year in a row, playing in the best conference, the best league in America, in FCS football. The disappointing thing for me uh, is we're all in the same bracket. Yeah. That I think it's kind of awkward. And, Unusual and a bit unfair, to be honest with you. But uh, those are the cards we're dealt. We need, we need to play our cards now. You alluded to those fourth straight years, John, and, and that. Well, let's make sure we put an exclamation point on that. South Dakota State, one of just five programs in the country to qualify for the playoffs four straight years. That's something to be very proud of. It is. And, and uh, I think, you know, I, I, I've never taken anything for granted, um, but I think sometimes fans, because of the success we've had, and not ultimate success, but success during the season, uh, kind of take it for granted. And it is a it is a dogfight. I mean, you you every week in the Missouri Valley, you got to battle your tail off. It's a playoff game essentially, and and then you graduate those kids. We graduated a year ago, and you come back with these guys, and and they do it again. I am I am so so proud of our football program. Let's talk about Montana. It's a place you've been before during the regular season and, of course, in the playoffs back in 2009. You've scored a lot of points against them. They've scored a lot of points against you over the years. They started, of course, with a big splash starting out the year beating North Dakota State in their place. Then their quarterback, Brady Gustafson, got hurt. He missed seven games, and they were inconsistent without him. But, boy, since he's been back the last couple of games, especially that game against Montana State over the weekend, he was red hot, 353 yards and four touchdowns, and this is a very good offensive team with him in there. Yeah, he's a, what is, essentially is an option team. They just don't they don't run dive and pitch. They run a, a passing option, and he stands back there and has his choice. And uh, they do a good job of pass blocking. They've always been really big and long uh, on the offensive line. They are again this year. And he's just a special player, and, and uh, he proved that coming back after that many weeks off. That uh, you know that uh, he's got a lot of talent. Jamal Jones, a guy they go to quite often in the receiving game. He had 132 yards, which was a, quite a bit above his average. He averages 99, but again, a threat in the secondary for them in, in terms of uh, a wide receiver. Yeah, they really, Jeff. They really have a lot of threats at wide receiver. They've got some real long guys like Winicky. They get some guys that can dance, like Trevor Wesley. Uh, they're they're committed to throwing the ball, but they can run the ball. They're the running back, the top guy, does a good job. So this is uh, this is one of those games that you're playing a team that battled their tail back in tails back into the playoffs, and they're hot right now. And we've got to bring our best game and, and see how it turns out. And defensively, a big challenge. You're going against a guy that is tied for the lead in the nation in sacks, and that's uh, uh, Tyrone Holmes. And of course, as a team, they led the Big Sky in sacks. They got to the quarterback 38 times this year. <laughs> I looked at that stat and I went, holy cow. Uh, but you know what? Uh, two things. Right? Number one, that young man is an is, uh, uh, unbelievable athlete, it both run and pass. But people throw the ball a lot more in the, in the big sky. I, I, I believe that, and I, as I'm watching tape, I see that. And so I think you have more opportunities for sacks then, but then not to take anything away from him. He's a really good football player. So now the the mindset of the team. I mean, you can take your lumps after Western Illinois and carry that over into this game, or you can look at it and say, look, it's the playoffs. Regardless of what happened, regardless of how we got here, we have a chance to win games and, and, and go a long way. That's that's the most important thing. There, there are some, there are some, uh, some uh, human things we need to get over. And uh, the loss to Western, them getting in is, a, is a, not, a, not a slap, but a reminder of, why we're not where we're supposed to be, the next game against North Dakota State, if we're lucky enough to win. All those things are mental things. What we need to do is focus on uh, today's practice, how good we can be today, uh, get our adjustments down, and really try to be ready to play our best football the year out in Montana. 
And then, John, your thoughts. Joe Glenn is announcing his retirement, and uh, I know that you and Joe have coached against each other, each other quite a bit. People want to focus on the last four years since he's been back in Vermillion, but certainly your days on a football field with Joe Glenn go back a long way. I just wonder your thoughts about him announcing his retirement. Uh, he's the kind of guy we need in coaching. You know, he's a, he's a difference maker. He's a positive guy. He's in it for the, for the, the athletes. Uh, you can tell uh, through the years his teams have lifted him up with praise, and he's he's embraced his teams in the in the sport of football. Uh, we're losing a, uh, in the Missouri Valley. We're losing a great great man as a as a head football coach. The USD's losing a great football coach. So I wish him the he and his wife the best. And I've loved uh, our competition because he's always been always been first class.